So I've been making videos for the past five months on TikTok and now recently on YouTube. And the most common question I get asked apart from what stock to invest in is how do I get started? What do I do? How can I invest my money? And that's a very fair question because if you're putting your money in savings, it's not giving you the best bang for your buck. You're not getting the best amount of return. So today we'll look at three different ways that you can make money on the ASX. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Faizy. I make videos about Australian personal finance. And today we're looking at three unique ways you can make money on the ASX based on your risk tolerance. So if you love risk, I've got you covered. If you hate risk, there's an option for you as well. And if you're somewhere in the middle, I've got you covered as well. So I just want to start off by saying that we are talking from a general standpoint only. This is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. Now, of course, there are more than these three ways to invest. These are not the only methods to do it. So of course, you're going to have other methods. So leave them below in the comments. I've also put the timestamps below of number one being the highest risk method and number three being the lowest risk comparatively. So you can easily flick through them. So let's dive into it. The first way is for people who just love risk and they don't mind losing a bit of money. They're happy to risk it all to get high returns. In this whole list, these people will make the highest returns, but they will also lose the most amount of money. So the first method is, of course, day trading or regular trading. Now, statistically speaking, if you're watching this video, you just can't pull this off. I'm sorry to say, but you just can't do this. Or there is a very, very low chance of you actually pulling it off consistently over the next few years. And the key word is consistently. Now, based on a lot of research, generally speaking, 80% of day traders lose money, 10% roughly break even, and the rest of the 10% actually come out on top and they make the most money. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you honestly believe that you are part of that 10%? Be honest. I mean, you could be. What do I know? I'm just looking at studies. So really think about this. So if you're someone who's young, who has low responsibility, practically no debt, steady job, live with your parents, someone like me, then you might want to try this out. So if this is you, what can you do to be successful in this? Well, the first thing you need to do is to completely emotionally detach from everything and just think rationally. Now, I'm not saying that you need to stop listening to your emotions or to completely get rid of your emotional side but try to understand them and see how it actually affects the market because it affects it more than you think. For example, with the COVID news around the world, people's emotions are obviously very, very high. So when there's news around the world of COVID cases increasing rapidly, this causes a lot of volatility. So that's an example. So once you figure out your emotions, then you can start looking at the technicals and the fundamentals. The fundamentals are basically everything to do with the company itself. So basically it's financials, it's competitors, it's industry and the micro and macro economic factors that affect the company. Also things like financial ratios and its overall outlook for the future. But as a day trader, you might not be too concerned with the fundamentals themselves. So you might skip them and go straight to the technicals. Basically technical analysis means to analyze the trends and essentially bury yourself in all of these charts. You need to find patterns and trade using graphs and indicators. Now this can get confusing very, very quickly because there are so many indicators and there are so many lines going everywhere. And if you dig too deep into it, then some of these indicators actually start to contradict themselves. But it is still very much possible to make money, just not a lot of people actually come out on top. The real truth about day trading is that news can literally break any second, so you have to be switched on at all times. For example, let's take everyone's favorite stock, Tesla as an example, and look at Elon Musk's tweets. These tweets have caused so much volatility in the market and just shows how quick the market is to react to this. Or Donald Trump catching COVID plus the tweets and you can see that the market fell almost immediately. So basically speaking, if you've got a nine to five job, day trading is going to be very difficult. Either you can focus on your work or focus on the day trading, which one are you going to choose? Because the fact is you can't do both effectively and consistently. Now, my personal experience with day trading is that I actually used to do it at work. And it feels amazing to make money while you're already making money at work. But when you lose, it's a different story. Not only do you feel crap, but it starts to affect your work and it definitely affected mine. One time I was trading and I made a few bad decisions and I ended up losing 1k by 11 a.m. Now this mistake screwed me over so badly that I was unproductive for the whole day and it really affected me mentally. Because if you're doing this at work, you're always going to be checking markets and you're going to be less productive at work. Now, quite frankly, I don't do this anymore and I wouldn't really recommend this to anyone. Now, option two is less risky, but before we go into it, please leave a like if you're finding value so far. So basically, option two is investing in blue chip companies that pay a high 
regular dividend. Now these are stable companies and this strategy is specific to the ASX. The reason being is because the ASX has one of the highest dividend yields in the entire world at about 4%. Now there's a link in the description for that source. Now as you can see this definitely beats a savings account by far but the real question is what company to invest in. Now Google gives a lot of results so we can start there. I personally can't tell you what to invest in so let's see what others are saying. Okay, so let's Google highest dividend stocks ASX and see what we can find. So we've got a bunch of links here. Let's just look at the NAB trade one. Five companies with reliable, strong dividends, and it's not too old either. So first we've got Rural Funds Group, estimated yield 5%, unfranked, RFF. Let's have a look. So they've got an estimated dividend yield of 3.63%, one year return, 35%, not too bad. And basically it's a REIT. So at the moment they manage over $1 billion worth of agricultural assets, which then they lease out to other companies. And the rent that they receive is then paid out to you via a dividend. So five years, they haven't done too bad either. 93%, pretty good. Now let's look at the second company. So now we've got Charter Hall Long Whale REIT, CLW ASX. The yield is quite good according to Google as well, 5.63%. One year return is not too good. However, five year return is about 26%, so it's, it's okay. So basically Charter Hall has quite a lot of infrastructure in office, retail, industrial, and other spaces, which then they generate income from, and then that's paid out as a dividend as well. So the second company is Coles, and the estimated yield is about 5.2%. Let's have a look at this. 3.11% estimated yield. One year return is about 20%, which is fairly good. And five years is about 58%, which is not too bad either. Now, of course, we are all very familiar with Coles. So let's move on to the next one, which is APA Group, estimated yield 5.6%. Let's have a look at this. So APA owns a lot of natural gas and electricity. And APA is Australia's largest natural gas infrastructure business. So it's quite a big deal. One year return is about 11% minus and five years is about 22%. Dividend yield is quite decent at 4.33%, so you could look into this as well. Now, the last company that we have is Rio Tinto. The gross yield is very, very high at about 7.6%. Google estimates the yield at about 4.91%. The one year return is 13.5% and five year return is doing quite good at about 175 so it's more than doubled its value and it's doing fairly good now of course these are just some of the ideas that you could look into and i just want to stress what nab trade has said down at the bottom here so just pause the video and just read this bottom bit over here and this is my view as well they're basically saying do your own research this is not advice so as you can see, a lot of ideas there to start researching. And of course, this is not a recommendation. Now with this method, it is more income specific because you'll be getting regular dividends and this will provide you with income throughout the year. Okay, so moving on, this is the last and final method and this has arguably the lowest risk. If you're busy working a nine to five, this is for you. And it's number three, which is passive investing through ETFs, which are exchange traded funds. Now, what the hell is an ETF? Basically, an ETF tracks a basket of stocks. So instead of buying a CBA stock, you might just buy an ASX 200 ETF instead. So this ETF will track the ASX 200 index and historically it goes up and down with the market. And generally speaking, it does trend upwards. Now, the reason why I say generally is because some years your returns are going to be negative, meaning you will lose money in some years. Now, since the 1900s, the ASX has given a historical average return of a massive 13.2% per annum. Now, if we scroll up, we can see that 22 years or 19% of this whole graph were negative years, meaning that you would have lost money if you invested in that year. But a massive 96 years were positive, which represents about 81%. Now here you can see the years that made a return between 10% to 20%. And you can see that some of the more recent years are here as well, being 2017, 2016, 2013, and 2012. And returns between 0 to 10% are years of 2015, 2014, and 2010. Now, you can see that in all of this, the worst year of the market was back in 2008, which is of course when the GFC happened. So as you can see, 2009 was one of the best recovery years for the ASX recently. 
Now the real benefit of the strategy is that your investment is diversified. So let's look at the CBA example again. If there is negative news relating to the CBA stock specifically, that's going to make the share price go down, obviously or even the whole banking sector as a whole because it's quite huge. Now the ETF itself will be volatile, but it won't go down by as much of a degree as CBA will. Because your investment is diversified, it gives you lower risk. And the best thing about the ETF is that you can buy them like a stock, meaning you can generally buy them with any broker that you trade with. But with ETFs, you do miss out on huge gains, but that's what you have to put up with. After all, this is a very low risk method compared to the others. Now ETFs charge a management fee, Typically, it's less than 1%. Some are even as low as 0.09% per year. But some ETFs charge 1% or more, but that's for good reason. But we'll go into that in another video. Now, if you're a super busy person, why is this good for you? Basically, you can dollar cost average over time. Now, dollar cost average basically means that you'll be investing in small increments, either fortnightly, weekly, or monthly, typically whenever you get paid. And this is quite convenient for some. And the benefit of this is that you can take advantage of the compounding effect. And the best part of this is that you don't need to read the news every single day or follow the latest trends or need to be switched on all the time. You can just passively invest. When I first started trading, I would follow method number one. I would read the news literally 24 seven before work, after work, even during work. And it really started to affect my mindset. And I can happily say that I don't do this anymore. And basically I can just chill out and this is why I picked method number three. Number one is way too risky for me and I simply don't have the time to research into every single company and trade. And method number two is still risky because it's company specific and companies can really just cut dividends at any time. So there is a bit of risk there. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas to start researching and start investing and you can put yourself in a better position than before and no longer just put all of your money in a savings account earning 1% when there are far better options out there. So in this video, I won't go through how to buy an ETF or which ETF to buy or which broker to use because the video will simply be too long and I don't really want to bore you guys. This video was just to put ideas into you and for you guys to choose a path. And of course, the method doesn't have to be mentioned in this video. There's more ways of doing it. However, there are more videos coming on how to buy an ETF, which ETFs to look at, and how to invest in the US market through our very own ASX. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.